Welcome everyone and welcome to today's video. How to Formula 3. Now for anyone who is new to this channel or viewing this video for the first time, I absolutely love this car. I've put a number of track guides together, plenty of races, and it's predominantly where I have spent my iRacing career. It is the best car or one of the best cars in iRacing and it's really disappointing to see that the driving standards of this series is so poor. Um, if you're watching this video in regards to what to expect at the Formula 3 series and you're new to it and wondering oh, what is, what is it like, there's no other way to say it. it's a crash fest and it's it's disappointing because it's got so much potential and there is some good racing to have here. So I'm on a bit of a one-man mission uh, to try and improve the driving standards so that we can all get that good racing that we also crave. Uh, because it has a real good participation. It's one of the most popular cars on the sim and it's, it's not nice to see so many people crash out in every single race and that's not an understatement. No matter what split you're in, there are always crashes. Um, this car, there is no contact that can be made. A bit of finesse is required, more so than the GT cars. So I've put together a five-step guide for you all, some pointers that I think will improve the driving standards, make you more consistent, and ultimately have more fun, because that's what we all want. And that's why we drive and get that close wall to wall racing. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoy it. Remember to hit that like and subscribe button. Feel free to join the Discord, which is in the link in the description below. If there's anything that you'd like to add that you think I've missed out, put them in the comments below. Always willing to have a discussion. And yeah, let's head into it. Step one is all about the start. Getting off that line in a quick but safe manner, limiting that wheel spin, unlike this guy here, and making sure you don't ruin half of the field's race before it's even begun. Uh, I've seen this happen all too often, so I'm going to give you guys my version. There are a number, but in particular my version that works every single time. So guys, I wanted to explain to you and show you why that guy spun the way he did off the line and got so much wheel spin. Now the reason why is because he is using the clutch manually. He hasn't got auto clutch selected. I'll show you how to do that afterwards. But the main reason why is because of that. Um, so I'm currently in neutral. The blue bar that you can see there is the clutch. I currently have it engaged. Now if I shift that into first gear and put full revs on and then release the clutch you can see I get a severe amount of wheel spin and then the engine turns off now I know we're all for realism and that's why we do sim racing some people take it more seriously than others but in regards to just making sure you get a good start and a relatively safe start please just turn the auto <laughs> the auto clutch on and I'll just quickly show you guys how to do that and then I'll show you how I particularly do my starts. So we're in the settings and we are looking in particular at driving aids. Now under here there's a number of options, auto pit speed, brake assistance and etc etc. Now what we're looking for is shift aid and there's an arrow here that will bring down some options. So we have auto shift, auto blip, auto clutch, anti-stall clutch, or none. Now, in particular, that gentleman, he had uh, clearly none of these on at all, which is why he had such uh, a big issue off the start, as I demonstrated. But what we want to do is select auto clutch. It just makes your life so much easier. Um, we never use the clutch uh, throughout an F3 race and I just think for the sake of simplicity and making sure we can get off the line without ruining everyone else's race, um, this is just essential to have selected. So I'm all for realism, but some things just, uh, we need that little bit of extra help. Uh, it's all about having that uh, 
we're all about racing and just making sure you make it to the end. So yeah, tick that, click done, and then we can head back to the start line and carry on with our start. So we're back on the start finish straight um, and we're going to do our practice start in particular how I do mine and I think this this never fails me. I always get off to a good start. Um, no one has, have, has ever really jumped me uh, from the start unless they've jumped the green lights themselves. <laughs> so I don't believe there's a quicker way out there to do this. Some of you guys uh, may dispute that but I'm yet to find it if you do. Please let me know in the comments below but here we go so i like to have my foot slightly on the brake pedal you can see the blue line the auto clutch is engaged uh, so i don't have to worry about that that is the setting coming into effect and i like to apply about three quarters of throttle and um, i don't like to go full revs because uh, i just think the car bogs down a little bit sometimes and i just want to avoid any possibility of wheel spin and if you if you've got full revs there's always that possibility um, so three quarters throttle and then when the lights hit green off the brake all the way down to the floor on the accelerator pedal and then making your way up the gears making sure you don't hit the rev limiter if you do the car will bog down and of course, depending on the track you're on, there can be a long run down to the first corner and uh, that will uh, give your opponents the opportunity to overtake you. So make sure you don't hit the rev limiter. But yeah, that works every single time. Quite simple, really. And that's pretty much what this guide is about. Simple things that will make your racing experience and this series much better and for the guys around you as well. Because we don't want to be like that gentleman who spun at the start of the track because it's just, that's not on. Because you're not only ruining, ruining your race, you're ruining a countless other people's too. So yeah, that is step one. On to step two. Step two guys is all about the first couple of laps and in particular, taking them easy. I would say 95% of crashes in this series happen on the first two laps. To be honest, it could be the same for all series. And the main reason for that is cold tires and cold brakes. We are racing in a simulator. I racing is a sim and is all about replicating things that happen in real life. And cold tires and cold brakes, as annoying as they are, are one of those things that has been brought over to I racing. Now it makes it makes for interesting racing, um, but I just no matter how many races I've done, people still haven't quite grasped the concept. But cold tires and cold brakes means no grip and you can't brake where you normally would. We have to wait a good two to three laps before everything comes up to temperature and we can then drive the car to its full potential. I see guys, as you'll see it on screen now, go around corners, full throttle when they should be lifting um, braking on their normal braking marker and locking up the tires and you just can't do it and that's where then you spin and that's where terrible rejoins happen and people just cause crashes and what you're seeing on screen right now is just lap one of a race I did the other day where I started at the back of the grid I knew this was going to happen because it happens in every single race and I can't tell you how many positions I made up on the first lap but it was a lot so my advice to all you guys, step two, is take it easy. Yes, you may lose a bit of time to the guy in front, but these races are half an hour apiece. There is a long way to go in this race. The first two laps, the first three laps even, do you really want to be crashing out? These races come around once every two hours. That's a long time to be waiting uh, if you crash out on the first lap or first two laps before you're able to do this again where you then might do the same thing again. So yeah, take it easy, lift off the throttle, brake a little bit earlier. You've got a full tank of fuel. You've got a car that does not feel good. Wait until you feel it coming to you. It's, it is noticeable. We can feel those tires heating up and you feel the grip and then you're able to really 
take it to uh, its full potential and go 100% out. So yeah, nice and easy guys. Don't torpedo, make sure you survive those first couple of laps. Step three is pretty much a continuation of step two. Easy on the throttle. For anyone who has seen my track guides, if you haven't, check them out. But anyone who's seen them, you'll hear me say over and over again, easy on the throttle. These cars have a very large amount of torque. And that means that a lot of energy is put into those rear tires when you put your foot down on the throttle, in particular in the lower gears. First gear, unless I absolutely have to, I always try to avoid because it's so easy to just put your foot down on the throttle and get the car to go from underneath you and just start start going into a pirouette <laughs> and the car just spins. As you can see, we're round into Lagos at the moment and I thought this was a good track to demonstrate to you guys. As you can see from our throttle inputs, not particularly the first sector, but the middle sector is very twisty and turning. There's a few tight hairpins and I see so many people in these hairpins just get on the throttle too early and the car just goes from underneath him. So yeah, just ease on that throttle. A little bit of practice is required. Don't, it's tempting to do, but don't push your foot down on that throttle early because otherwise the car will go from underneath you and even more so when you're on the first couple of laps with cold tires and cold brakes. Step four is patience and assessing your opponent. I don't think enough people do this. Uh, I've already mentioned patience being an important trait uh, earlier on in step two with cold tires and cold brakes. And it's something that you need to have throughout the longevity of a race. As I've stated before, these races are 30 minutes long and you don't have to make all of your positions up and all of your overtakes uh, and your lunges, <laughs> which there are too many of in this series, on the first couple of laps. Assess your opponent. We're not in a, a privileged position where these cars have brake lights, uh, so we can't it makes it, well, it makes it a little bit more difficult to see where they're braking. You can uh, see where your opponent is braking in relation to yourself. And these cars are so difficult to follow closely behind because you always run that risk of contact. And any contact in this car, it's just a no-no. Uh, they're very fragile, just like they are in real life. And you will get damage, which will uh, result in a severe lack of performance or drop in performance. Uh, front wing damage will mean lack of downfalls, top end speed, or worst case, broken suspension, and on the next corner, the car will just go straight on into a wall, which we don't want. So patience is key. Assess your opponent who is in front of you or behind you. See where you're faster. See where the guy is slower and Formulate a plan, think. There are certain corners on, tr on tracks that an overtake is just not possible. In particular, Brands Hatch here, there's quite a few corners which aren't possible to overtake on. This one here that you're seeing on your screen right now is, it's the safest place me to overtake in without causing an accident or an incident. Whereas these next two corners, even though I was quicker, they're not, they're very tight, they're very quick, they're just not, really a place to overtake and you run the risk of ruining <laughs> both of your races which you don't want because you are sharing a track with everyone else and I think sometimes people are too selfish but they try to go all out at the start as I said earlier make up all their positions and even if they are quicker than the person in front they just don't wait they don't wait and they try and take them on whatever corner it may be, and it ends up being that they ruin not just their race, not just the other guy's race, but the people behind them as well who end up crashing into their crash, which could have been easily avoided. Um, it happens too many times, so patience is a virtue, guys. 
be patient, assess your opponent, and then make your move. And the last step, step five, is tire degradation and the weather. As I said previously, in regards to cold tires, we are rating in the sim, and tire degradation is another one of those aspects from real life that is transferred over and something that we have to deal with. So the longer a race goes on, the less grip you end up having on your tires. Now, of course, this varies track to track and varies on the temperature as well. Very hot temperatures, the tires are gonna degrade a lot quicker. So in particular, Watkins Glen, which is always on the F3 calendar, is always a very hot track surface. It's quite hard on the tires as well. There are some very fast, high downforce corners that are required and they take a lot out of the tires. So you'll see guys start to spin uh, in the second half of the race because just like when you're on cold tires, the car starts to react the same, except we have to cope with low fuel, so we'll be quicker in a straight line, but not as quick through the corners. So we have to lift off the throttle slightly, adjust our braking zones, bring them back slightly. So the race is forever evolving. You start with no grip, you then get grip, and then you start to lose it towards the end. Just like a real life Formula One race. <laughs> so that is what makes this series so good and so popular, but it's just another aspect of why people um, end up trashing towards at the end of the race or the latter stages of the race. Into Lagos, a track um, that as I am recording this, is the track uh, for this week of Formula 3. Is a fast track, very hard on the tires, and I've seen it already in the few races that I've done. People losing it and spinning in the last couple of laps just because they've pushed for so long um, and driven 100% that they've, they've got no grip and they still try to drive that. So there's a couple of things that you can do. You can... Um, take it easier on the tires. So that means not getting on the throttle as early um, out of the corners, making sure you don't scrub those tires and um, lift off a little bit on the entry to the corners. And just don't go as hard um, because it will definitely benefit you in the end of the race because you'll just start to, oh, everyone's lap times are dropping around you. You'll just start to see that relative come down and close the gap with an opportunity to overtake them towards the end of the race. So yeah, just another aspect to take into account and something that I don't think people um, generally uh, generally take into account and just forget about. Uh, they'll be too, <laughs> too, uh, too concentrated on just going 100% the whole time. But there is a little bit of strategy that is required in this series. It's not just uh, full out all the time. Of course, if you're going wheel to wheel, with someone, then by all means, go out, go 100% because you do not want them to overtake you. But guys, I hope that has helped you out. I hope it helps you guys moving forward. Anyone new to the series, I hope it's uh, prepped you for what is to come. My last little bit of bonus advice would be that if you're not quite confident about starting um, further up the grid and qualifying, don't qualify at all. So make sure you put plenty of practice in before the race and start from the back of the grid. Hang back, let the uh, inevitable crashes happen because even with this guide, uh, while I hope to reduce the amount that is in the series uh, to date they will still happen regardless it's just the way this car is and just the way this series uh, always will be so yeah start from the back of the grid you may not get a top five you may not get a top 10 but i bet you you will gain some confidence and you will still have some good racing there's there's good racing to be had no matter where you finish so yep yeah, I hope that helps guys. Remember to hit that like and subscribe button. Feel free to join my Discord. It's in the link in the description below. If you want to talk more, feel free to message me. I'm always available. And yeah, I hope to see you guys out on track. See you for the next one.